Oh, hey. Hey, what are you wearing? Today, my outfit is from Desert Guel. They are my favorite place to shop for concerts, going out, or going on vacation. So what are you waiting for? Shop them now. Link below. Whether it's festival season or time to run. So what are you waiting for? Run to Desert One now. Hello everyone, I'm Arietta Nasto with Words and Music and today we will be speaking with British singer-songwriter Matt Maltese. You might know him from his very popular song that blew up on TikTok not too long ago as the world caves in. Matt will be joining us in Singapore to perform on May 24th and you can get your tickets now in the link in our bio or down below. We are actually getting a very exclusive chat with Matt today as he is just one week from releasing his newest album, Driving Just to Drive, on April 28th. Alrighty, now let's talk to Matt. Hi, Matt. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We heard you're on tour right now. Where are you speaking to us from? Um, I haven't started the tour just yet, but I'm in mm -hmm. London and then going to Atlanta soon for a festival um before my asia and australia tour starts yeah very interesting very it's fun like the, calm, it's like the calm before the storm right now a hundred percent so tell us a little bit about your new album coming out very very soon what was your biggest inspiration while producing it um oh yeah i mean i sort of take i feel like i take lots of little inspirations along the way I'm um, so much of what I write about and make is is just people the people in my mm -hmm. life and my relationship with them and um yeah I feel like this was a again another document of just where mm -hmm. I'm at or how I look back on things and yeah very cool if you could tell people to listen to just one song on the album what would it be Oh, that's hard. That's like <laughs> choosing between my eleven children. Um, I, I suppose the last song, um, "But Leaving," is felt feels at the moment like my favorite. But I mean, it mm -hmm. changes every week. So yeah, <laughs> ask me again later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. We'll ask you again when you come to Singapore and see if the answers change. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of the show in Singapore, what can your fans expect from driving just to drive? Um, well, I think because I've never played in Singapore, I really would like to do a show that um, just has a lot of songs from all of my uh, releases over the years. Um, so I hope it, I hope it basically, you know, covers all the bases of <laughs> of the songs people have listened to over the years. And um, yeah, it's um, it's going to be such an incredible experience for me just because i've i've only been to asia once and mm. yeah just to just to be in a place that i've never played before and have some fans who've listened to me for six or seven years is always creates a really unique energy so yeah a hundred percent speaking of you coming to singapore what are you most looking forward to <laughs> that's a good question um the weather is the weather good i suspect the weather's warmer right very warm very humid. yeah yes yes so the warmth um i'm always i'm just a big food person so mm -hmm. yeah excited to try the food in all the places i'm going to um and yeah and just meet 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 people there yeah yeah you're definitely coming to the right place with the food <laughs> Great. by Great. far i'm a picky eater yeah. and yeah. even for me it's been yeah. a top place for food oh amazing amazing excited <laughs> So we got some questions in from fans this week. Sure. First one up is from Alicia. They ask, it seems like there's a strong melancholy energy to your music. It feels comforting to me as a listener to have an artist understand and relate to some experiences or feelings I've had. But how do you keep that balance and ensure you don't get consumed by that melancholy energy yourself? Mm. Well, I think... I think it's balanced for me. I think that that melancholy is is a part of 
everybody's life, whether they like mm-hmm. to admit it or not. Um, and I think being open about that and accepting that it's always going to be there. You can't live in this world and not be mm-hmm. aware that it's really hard. Even if it's not hard for yourself, it's hard for everyone around you. And um, I think, yeah, I think it's friends and and family and yeah, it's just people mm-hmm. that keep keep me going personally um we're all like sharing this weird sometimes awful sometimes amazing experience of life together um Mm -hmm. so yeah I'd say by not isolating myself too much and yeah you know writing the song and then leaving it behind as well Mm -hmm. is something I often Mm do I I want I want to sort of document but not wallow Mm. that's a very interesting perspective Mm -hmm. Do you um do you hope that your fans listen to your music to kind of relate? You know, has that always been a goal of yours to create almost relatable music? Yeah, I mean, I definitely make music to to connect to my mm-hmm. fellow person for sure. I think um I think that if you're connecting to people, that's often a good sign that you're making mm-hmm. pretty honest music, you know, because yeah. You know, I think the more real you are about your own experience, the more that does just relate to other people's experiences. Um, And yeah, it brings me a lot of, it makes this job feel um, not not so selfish when you hear that Mm. people actually get feelings from it. And, you know, because some people have really difficult jobs and I'm incredibly lucky that I get to like write songs. Um, And sometimes you can feel you know what what place does writing songs have in a world like this that has so much Mm. to be changed and um it's it's a sort of yeah it's a big comfort to me when I know that it that it's helping people in some way a hundred percent yeah making those connections is also you know what we're all about too as a promoter just trying to get the fans connected to the artists and Mm -hmm. it's a big part about we what we do here at LAMC so we definitely Mm. agree with you on that Mm. part that we're so thankful that our jobs are you know just putting on concerts but at the end of the day we're connecting people to you know their artists their idols people who they've envisioned meeting for years and giving them the opportunity to yeah amazing yeah so second question comes from Allegra what inspired you the most during the production of Crystal? And is there any artist you wish to collaborate with in the future? Um, wow, two questions from Allegra. <laughs> no, she um, <laughs> she's neat. <laughs> Throwing them uh, all in there. Yeah. Um, what inspired me most? I think, to be honest, during Crystal, uh, it was my sort of life situation. I'd kind of just been mm-hmm. dropped by a label and I felt... I felt a little bit like a sort of shell of myself. I felt so much had fallen away of the last few years of what it's like to just, you know, be on a label, suddenly doing music full time, all of these things. And then when I was making Crystal, it was a bit like I'd shrunk down to like the 18 year old version of Mm. myself. again. And so I think that that feeling was really at the end of the day was really helpful for the work because I kind of had I sort of had everything to prove but nothing um mm. I'd kind of think after you know failure or some sense of failure you actually sometimes make your best work mm. um and so yeah that was the case with that what was Allegra's other question I've forgotten now <laughs> uh is there any artists you want to con- collaborate with in the future oh, um <laughs> I would say I don't know I mean I, I'm very open basically yeah mm-hmm. I think that I don't have that one that one person I really want to work with. There's mm-hmm. there's um yeah, I'm basically really <laughs> open. Yeah, yeah. Open book, willing yeah. to collab yeah, with anyone. Yeah, yeah, Love yeah. that. Um next question comes from Farhana. Do you ever get burnt out and feel like you want to quit making music? Um I don't think I ever feel like I want to quit making music, but I think like everyone, I have moments where I've pushed too hard and made mm. made made too much and not stopped. And there's a balance, you know, we're all trying to find that balance. Um, and I think a lot of the time I, I sort of try and 
make albums write for other people tour and sometimes you can't you just can't have it all you can't do it all Mm -hmm. um so I definitely have moments but I do I do feel that even even when I'm disillusioned or or knackered or whatever there's Mm -hmm. there's always a sense of um music being yeah the only thing I could do I mean I had just had no idea what else I would do really (laughs) maybe if I had another passion but this is kind of the only thing in my life that's always just made me just felt transcendent has always made Mm. me feel more than I can feel without it yeah yeah how did you know that music was you know your passion um I think I think similarly to to what I was saying where just you know listening to songs growing up and how that made me feel more than any other art form um and they just always felt the most music just always felt the most mythical thing to me mm. um and yeah i think it's a very unique so obviously each art form is unique but it's unique mm. in the sense that you can kind of carry songs with you through experiences mm. in real time you know you can like have a conversation that changes your life and then listen to a song and then that song reminds you of that conversation for the rest of your life um whereas i guess movies or seeing physical art are, are much more sort of conscious taking time out decisions but the way that music just can accompany your life is something that i just just was kind of second to none for me um and so it was always something i wanted to do yeah yeah that's a really really interesting perspective <laughs> And like music grows with you too, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, and you can you can grow out of it, but you still you still sort of feel nostalgic for a time when you listen yeah. to it because it just reminds you so much of 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 when you listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. What's a song that you can think of right now? It's okay if you can't think of yeah, one that yeah. kind of, you know, throws you back to that nostalgia. That, that's that feeling. Oh, yeah, good question. Um <laughs> to be honest, a lot of a lot of sort of uh american songbook stuff so like, i remember like like chet baker i used to listen to all the time when i was like 17 and then i just stopped and i think that now if i listen to him i can't not think of being 17 um i have that with a few artists definitely but yeah that's one that comes to mind yeah yeah <laughs> yeah okay last question comes from lily what's the set list for the singapore show <laughs> <laughs> um really I'm still working it out actually but I promise it will be a lot of songs that's all I can promise <laughs> but I want to go back to yeah. just one question that might help an aspiring artist out there like what we talked about with Crystal you know being rejected definitely hurts but what are some tips you have for people going through rejection themselves and you know bouncing back um yeah I think I think basically just just try and um just kind of remember kind of why you did it at the beginning mm-hmm. i think a lot of the time we can build up um worlds around us that we then need to feel validated by um and i think that yeah i think you've just got to get back to the place where you're enjoying making it and so always follow that if you're enjoying making it then that's all that you can control um mm. And and if you're not, like, take a big break as well, you know, and do something else for a bit. And sometimes you need to disappear to, from something to fall back in love with it. And and sometimes it's not right and you just need to do something else, you know. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's always got to be led by how happy you are making the work um, and trying not to be set on goals or validation from outside forces mm-hmm. that's really hard to do though i'm not i'm not saying <laughs> that either but yeah. yeah yeah definitely easier said than done but i think yeah. that's great advice all righty well thank you so much matt for being on words and music we can't wait to see you may 24th in singapore make sure to get your tickets very very soon amazing thanks so much for having me i look forward to it <laughs> <laughs>